This man raped me, he needs to go to jail. Um, so I went through with the trial. Orleans Parish prosecutors are putting a local man on trial for a third time for an alleged sexual assault that happened nearly 30 years ago. Good evening and thanks for watching. I'm Kristen Pierce. A woman says she was raped as a teenager and she wants the man who did it. She wants him behind bars. Investigative reporter David Hammer brings us this story about a very long, very difficult fight for justice. And we should warn you that this story contains some graphic descriptions of sex crimes. Latoya Gaines spent most of her life trying to forget the night of October 16, 1991. That's when a friend of her neighbors picked her up to buy her some school clothes, but allegedly drove her to this house instead. I looked up to find the door open with him standing in the door. He pushed me back onto the toilet, uh, shoved me down on my knees, and he had a, a knife, a, a pocket knife, and suggested that I either do what he asked or I would die. What did he ask you to do? He asked me, he forced me to perform oral sex on him. And, uh, and you were how old? I was 14. Police arrested this man, Gerard Ladmoreau, and charged him with aggravated oral sexual battery. Gaines says her drug-addicted mother had her sign a paper dropping the charges a few weeks later. Soon after, she ran away from home and ended up in a homeless shelter at 16. I got away because I just felt like this was just gonna continue to happen. She suppressed her anger for 23 years until one day in 2014. On that day, she dropped off her son at Warren Easton High School and saw Ladmoreau pull up in front of her. She said a girl got out of the truck and walked into school. When that little girl got out of that vehicle, I began to realize that it wasn't about me anymore, that there were other people that he could possibly continue doing this to. Gaines said she drove straight to the district attorney's office, even going the wrong way down South White Street, to ask prosecutors to reopen the drop charges. They did. The case went to trial in 2015, but the jury couldn't reach a verdict. Prosecutors tried the case again in 2016. Another hung jury. And I, I truly, I felt like many people, like I was by myself. But it turns out she wasn't. Exactly two months before Ladmoreau was arrested in Gaines' case, he was charged with raping 19-year-old college student Tatanisha Smith. The police report from August 16, 1991, says Smith was walking to a hotel by the airport when a man she'd never seen before pulled up in a red BMW. She said he offered her a ride, telling her it wasn't safe to be out. So as we were driving to the hotel, so I thought he made a right turn onto the interstate and he pulled out a gun and he said, guess what? Smith told police the man drove her to a warehouse and automotive shop in New Orleans and made her bend over a chair. At gunpoint, he raped me anally, and he also made me perform oral sex on him. Records show the police found items at the body shop exactly as Smith had described them. She ID'd Ladmoreau, ID'd his gun. The NOPD crime lab found semen matching Ladmoreau's blood type on Smith's underwear. This man raped me, he needs to go to jail. Um, so I went through with the trial. But the case file also shows Ladmoreau passed a private lie detector test in which he claimed he met Smith at an adult bookstore and had consensual sex with her. Smith was in shock when the jury found Ladmoreau not guilty. And I just broke down in the courtroom. The judge took me to his chambers and he tried to console me. Um, because it was just unbelievable that that happened. Smith is from San Francisco and lives in Atlanta now. She thought she had left the New Orleans chapter of her life behind until she was called to testify at Gaines' first trial in 2015. But when I got the call, um, I felt like I just needed to be available and there for her. The first time Smith and Gaines met, it was in the hallway outside the courtroom. They fell into each other's arms, crying. Tatanisha being able to get up there and tell this story. I'm thankful because she's willing to do it 
I'm thankful that she's had, she has the courage to do it. Even though Ladmerow was acquitted in the Smith case, testimony about it has been allowed in Gaines' trials, so prosecutors could show a pattern. A pattern that includes Ladmerow's violent crime convictions for assault with a deadly weapon and domestic abuse battery. But justice delayed is often justice denied as memories fail and evidence disappears. From my understanding, the, the rape kit was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. Gaines also heard police mishandled some of the evidence in her case, taking a towel Admiral allegedly used to clean his semen off her and placing it into the same evidence bag with a pair of his underwear, making it all unusable in court. But Ladmerow's attorney, David Belfield, says there was no semen in evidence to begin with in Gaines's case. The report does not find any of this gentleman's sperm on that, one, on that young lady. And so it didn't find it in 1991, and they're not going to find it in 2018 because it doesn't exist. Can you tell me what happened uh, back in 1991 with Miss Gaines? I can't talk to you about that. I need to see my attorney. Are you denying that you forced her to have oral sex with you? I'm not speaking on that at all, sir. Belfield says justice has also been unfairly delayed for his client. Whenever they're ready, we're ready. Okay. It's been 30 years. Whenever they're ready, we're ready. It's just unfair system. Smith says what's unfair is that Gaines is still waiting for a verdict. I want her to receive that closure as well. And anything I can do to help her, then that's what I'm going to do. Those two women, those two survivors showing so much strength. That was David Hammer reporting. Now, Eyewitness News will be at the trial tomorrow. It's expected to take about two days. We'll have updates about what happens here on Channel 4 and also on our website, wwltv.com.